Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Amorpho Life. We're so excited. It's going to be a series here uh, that we're going to be broadcasting with some amazing guests uh, under the theme of how to hack your fitness to get stronger. So um, over the next few months, we're going to have guests, our friends of the brand. Some of them are ambassadors. Some of them are partners. And the conversations are going to be pretty wide ranging around things that we care about. Things like health, wellness, um, fitness, training, all the things we do uh, as a brand. And uh, hopefully there'll be something that you take out of them. We call them micropods because a lot of these, um, these um, podcasts tend to be pretty long and that's okay. That's perfectly fine but because we're everything micro. We've got obviously micro loading, as you know, is our whole science where small changes drive big results. Uh, so that for us, uh, we continue to carry the theme to our, our micropods. Uh, and our first guest that we're going to welcome, I'm really excited, is Seamus Mullen. Obviously, you know him, world-renowned chef, mountain biker. He's a well wellness extraordinaire. He loves sauna and cold plunges. He's coaching in that. Uh, and he has a lot to say. I, uh, we've had the uh, pleasure to meet a few times, and I'm really, really excited for him to be our first, very first guest. Um, and uh, to hear more from him around how he thinks about this. This is pretty cool when you're when you're a chef, you normally are a lot about what you eat and take in, but Seamus goes way, way beyond that. He also uh, talks about uh, training, wellness, health, and how those things all come together to make you stronger. So any second here, hopefully Seamus is coming on. Uh, he's down in, I think in Malibu today, he's in there. Seamus raised his hand, so we'll see here. Uh, one second. There we go. Here is Seamus. One second. Here we go. Hi, uh, there's the bomb. There he is. Hey. You, you were hearing me all the time, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I was listening to you, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Hey, so awesome <laughs> to have you on. Thank you so much. Are you done in Malibu today? I am, yeah. I'm actually I'm in Topanga, close to Malibu. Oh, nice, nice. Well, thank, thank you for joining. Is it exciting? Yeah. You're the very first guest for uh, Amorpho Live. I'm psyched to be here. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm at the tail end of a pretty bad sickness, so I may cough a little bit, so I'll do my best not to. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Well, hey, can you share a little background on yourself and maybe tell tell uh, our viewers how you got introduced to Amorpho? Sure. Um, well, let me see background on me. I'm a chef. Um, I grew up in the restaurant industry, and uh, I I about 15 years ago, actually 20 years ago, I started struggling with some health issues, um, and my health kind of went down a pretty rotten path. And I got to a point where I realized I needed to make some changes in my life where I wasn't going to be around for very long. Um, and I started making some lifestyle changes, which helped me get my health back on track, addressing diet, nutrition, um, movement, recovery, uh, all sorts of things. <laughs> so, pardon me. Um, and, and one of the things that I really learned in my process was that making micro changes, small changes every day could have a macro impact on, on the outcome. Um, I was introduced to Amorpho about a year and a half ago, actually before um, the brand launched through my friend, Steven Chok, who runs S10 training in, in, um, in New York. And he said, listen, you got to check these guys out. This is really cool stuff. It's a really interesting idea. And then from there, my friend Manny DeMarzo, who was already working with you guys, reached out and said, I want to connect you to the team at Amorpho. I think you guys would really, would really, uh, would jive and line up. And um, so I got to know you and Gareth and a bunch of other folks, Tatiana from the team, and um, fell in love with the idea of, of Amorpho. I think it's an incredible um, uh, principle of of uh, fitness um, and it fits completely and it's totally aligned with everything I believe in. That's amazing. So you you mentioned a little bit kind of what got you into the journey, you know, being in a in, in a not a great uh, place, which I think a, a lot of people and a lot of uh, viewers, you know, it's really easy to end up there. Uh, what do you think were the the drivers for you to change? And also, if you have any suggestions of of <laughs> hacks or tricks or ways that keep you in the positive routines? I mean, for me, <laughs> excuse me, 
<laughs> change was was um, I didn't really have a choice. I was very very sick. I was struggling with an autoimmune disease, uh, a couple of different presentations of autoimmune disease, and um, I was I had gone down the path of conventional treatment and was really not getting any better. I was really just um, treating downstream effects of an upstream problem. And so I, I really had to, I realized that I needed to advocate for myself. It's just sort of like, I mean, in the same way that if you really want to get fit, having a personal trainer can be really helpful, but ultimately the work comes down to you. You have to decide that this is something that you want to do and commit to. And the same thing with, with health. So I realized that I had kind of been outsourcing my, my health to the experts um, and that wasn't really serving me because I couldn't just like take a pill and miraculously be better. Um, my, my responsibility was much more than just taking a pill. It was taking a pill and following up and doing everything else. And sometimes it was not making, taking a pill. Um, <clears throat> so all of that was kind of the path that got me, uh, got me on this of the reason that I got on this path. Um, and, uh, sorry, what, what was the second half of your question? I forgot the second half of your question. No, it was more like if there are any hacks or tricks oh, yeah, that hacks. help oh. you stay into your routines. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, um, my, my, my grandfather's best friend was this guy named Tatsuo, who was a, a gardener. Um, and he was a Japanese Zen gardener. And when I was nine, um, I was visiting my grandparents and Tatsuo gave me this lesson that has been a life lesson that I've carried with me, um, ever since. And has really helped me, particularly in my journey from being pretty ill to, to getting my health back. He was, um, I was nine, I was visiting my grandparents and Tasso was gardening on his hands and knees and crawling backwards. And I just thought it was kind of weird the way he was working and he was crawling backwards. And I just, um, you know, very naively asked him, <laughs> I said, Tatsu, are you, you know, is there any reason why you work backwards, why you crawl backwards? And he took his gloves off and he sat up and he said, well, Seamus, that's so I can always be inspired by all I've accomplished and never overwhelmed by the insurmountable task ahead. And that became something um, really, really powerful for me that I've applied to to my my life in general, which is to if you look at the the huge task ahead of you and you look at it in the macro, um, it becomes overwhelming and very difficult and becomes easier just to not start in, at all. But to tackle it in the micro, little bit by little bit can have a huge impact. And that is um, is the way that I try to look at everything I'm doing. So rather than just seeing, oh my God, I have this, this massive task ahead of me, <laughs> let me break it into bite-sized digestible bits that I can then look at and say, okay, I've accomplished this and I've accomplished that. And you can start to stack. And I think a lot of people call it like an atomic habits, James Clear calls it habit stacking. You're stacking these uh, these, these accomplishments that you've made that helps you get further down the road. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I love that. I mean, it's it's amazing. You meet people and and you you know it's that micro event in life or a time in life, and you and it just follows you forever. That that was amazing. I love that story. Yeah. Uh, hey, I mean, we we talked a lot when we met about something that I'm passionate about, which is obviously sauna and cold plunging, and I know you love it. And and to a lot of people, that's just one thing that feels. Uh, scary or uncomfortable, which I guess it's the point for it. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts because you obviously have helped see a lot of people through that. I, I do it multiple times a week. I love it. But in the beginning, I have to say, I'm looking at especially the cold plunge, not so much the yeah. sauna, but I'm looking at that thing and I go, I'm going to get in that water and it's 40 degrees and I'm yeah. petrified. Can you talk about that? Because I, I think yeah. it's really, really a good thing. Yeah, I started doing, um, well, I grew up in rural Vermont where we had a sauna and we would chop a hole in the ice, you know, Scandinavian style and jump in in the middle of the winter. Um, so I've kind of been doing cold exposure my whole life, but that was, that was much more of like a, um, of a, a show of, of <laughs> machismo. It wasn't, I, we weren't thinking about it in a therapeutic sense. Um, I started really concentrating on therapeutic cold exposure, um, when I was on my starting my journey to get healthy and um, and it's been for for about 12 years it's been an integral part of my life um, I started initially with cold showers and then lugging up bags of ice into my into my apartment in New York City and putting it in the bathtub um, until eventually I I had enough space that I could DIY a cold plunge from a chest freezer uh, and now I, I have a beautiful uh, cold plunge from the folks at the cold plunge which is great um, it's one of those things that is very uncomfortable, but we live in uh, a world in which comfort is really um, always at our fingertips. We have so much access to comfort. And I think that it's 
programmed into our into our DNA and our our evolution to to seek comfort. The problem is is that we we no longer have to go through discomfort to get to comfort. We've uh, we've kind of engineered an environment in which we can always have comfort on demand, and um, and so we have to actually seek out. <laughs> discomfort to a degree and the cold is one of the most incredible teachers it's um it allows us to understand to confront uh our fears our anxiety and then to overcome that and the, you, learning the, the 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 breath work is incredibly important to be able to do that um so on the, there's kind of an emotional component to it but then the physiological benefits are extraordinary from um uh, affecting and speeding up your metabolism to fat burning, to stimulating the immune system, you name it. But I think the one part that I love more than anything is that the cold allows us, if you can learn how to use your breath to, um, to take control of your autonomic nervous system. So if you go into fight or flight immediately, which is what happens when you get into the cold water, your body, your brain says, get me out of here right now. And if you're allowed, if you're able to use your breath to tell yourself that you're okay, that you can move through it, then you pass the threshold and on the other side of it, you can reap the rewards. So there's there's something called the pain pleasure spectrum. Um, and there've been studies done at Stanford where they've shown that um, just you know three minutes of cold exposure will increase your dopamine production over the next eight hours by 300%. And that's because you experience that, that acute discomfort. And as a result, then you have this kind of rebound effect of increased dopamine. Um, so there are all sorts of amazing benefits to it. Uh, not the least of which is also something called hormesis, which is stress on the mitochondria within the cell. And that is what allows us to create new, stronger cells through through autophagy, which is the upcycling of, of damaged mitochondria. And that's essentially the, the key to living a long and healthy and strong life is to have lots of, uh, of mitochondria, have dense numbers of mitochondria. Uh, and the cold exposure and the sauna, those are two really, really good ways to stimulate that. I love that. That's uh, that's really really cool, um, and and you know do them regularly. But I think it's when you know those those benefits, it's just besides. I think just mm -hmm. it's a kick. You just yeah. come out of it and you feel incredibly energized. But the long term <laughs> effects are are obviously uh, superb. So hey, so so uh, bringing it back to um, micro here, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we talked a lot about this, but micro load obviously being our science. You've tried all our products. You I mean you have mm -hmm. the the whole collection. Which is your favorite? Um, I mean, I, I think obviously the vest is my favorite just because it is it's a familiar piece that I've used weighted vests for years. Um, but to have a weighted vest that's not uh, excessively heavy and that is very comfortable and that moves with you really allow, <laughs> allows to you to use it on a, on a regular basis. I mean, I wear it all the time whenever I'm doing resistance training, even if I'm doing, you know, if I'm doing bench press or deadlifts, things that you wouldn't necessarily think that having the additional weight is going to have is going to create more resistance. Um, I'll still wear it because I see the benefits from it. <laughs> but obviously with pull-ups and push-ups and hiking and things like that. It just becomes this really great way, again, to add like a micro amount of change to what you're doing. And while it may not seem like a lot of weight, when you take it off, you realize just how how much extra weight you've been carrying. I love I mean, it. I use, love I use it. all the products, but the vest is definitely the one that is the most versatile for me. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, uh, I love that. And, you know, I think... Um, it's been so amazing just to hear you, you know, and you tie those things together with how you think about health and wellness. Uh, and so now I want to move into our next phase here of this uh, micropod, which is the rapid fire questions. Okay. I'm going to yeah. fire them off and, you know, keep them, you know, you get, there's, there's only one, one answer. Well, you, I guess you could say both, but we'll do those. And then after that, we'll dive into, I'm seeing some questions popping up here and I, I do okay. want to make sure we leave some time for, for, uh, our viewers to be able to ask you some questions, but I'll, I'll start off here. Since you started with the vest, I'm going to start asking you olive or ocean colorway. What's that? What? Olive Do you or ocean? like olive or ocean? Yeah, Blue I mean, or green? Olive. 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 Porsche or Corvette? Porsche. Squishy fries or crispy fries? Uh, crispy fries. Do you have your own Netflix account or do you use someone else's Netflix account? Neither. I don't have Netflix. Okay. Okay. What dish do you cook best? 
Ooh, paella. Paella. I can't wait to try that. I bet you it'll be some best paella ever. Beach or mountains? Oh gosh, that's a that's a tough one. Fifty fifty split. Okay, Laun laundry or dishes? Dishes, hands down. Ice coffee, ice coffee or hot coffee? Hot coffee. Lemon or lime? Lime. Marvel or DC? I don't have an opinion, so I guess I'm going to say Marvel because <laughs> I was the first one. <laughs> okay, reading or listening to an audiobook? Both. I usually, if it's a good book, I listen to it first and then I read it. Okay, um, pineapple or pizza on pizza or no pineapple on pizza? No pineapple. <laughs> okay, last one, your favorite podcast. Okay. Favorite podcast. Um, besides this one. Besides this one. Like, I would, I mean, probably Huberman Lab. Yeah. Yeah. They're, so they're great. They're good great. information. They're... Lots, I mean, they're a little long, but macro, they're macro podcasts. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, they're, they're a little longer. Uh, Hey, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into the questions here. Uh, so that, that are popping up, I see. The first one is uh, from Houston. Uh, so you talked about the vest. So the question was, can anyone wear this vest, or do you have to be a high performance athlete? No, actually, what I love about the vest, and especially for for um, older folks or for people that are just starting to get into movement, it's a great way to add resistance um, and with with zero impact. So if you're um, you know, I actually, I, I had my dad, I have a couple of them. My dad was visiting me and we, he's in his mid seventies. And um, so just, and I've been really working on him, working with him on, on doing more resistance training. Um, so we went for a hike and he was wearing the vest and he, and it was great because it gave him a, made the hike that much more strenuous. He got a little bit more um, resistance training in, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't uncomfortable and it wasn't, um, it wasn't hard in his joints at all. So I think That's it's a great, if it's actually a great if you have like if you have um an older family member who is uh is you know thinking about getting into exercise or is already active um but needs to do a little bit of resistance training it's something that's really important particularly for women as they go get older the vest is a great way to kind of ease into resistance training that's amazing it's actually dovetailing into a question from to, from alicia who asked you know have you ever used the product for recovery or physical therapy and it's almost in the vein of that isn't it yeah yeah that's an interesting point it's kind of like wearing a, a weighted blanket to a degree but um you know there's something very calming about it. when i put the vest on i definitely feel like you, you said marvel or, or or dc i do feel like a superhero when i put it on there's something um incredible about you know zipping it up and it feels like you're, you've got a shield on um, but yeah, for, for, for recovery, if you're doing, um, I've had multiple knee surgeries and so I, I've done a lot of walking, um, as part of my, my recovery, um, and PT for, the, for my knee and having a little bit of, of weight, um, just adds a little bit more resistance and makes it a little more strenuous. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Here's a question from San Diego. I'm so impressed by your background and your journey, hoping to make some changes to improve my own health. Uh, but it's quite daunting. What would you recommend as a good first step to help start my journey? Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I fundamentally believe that food is the the number one driver. It's the first choice to make. I mean, if you if you talk to any really really you know, fit athlete, they'll tell you that six pack abs are made in the kitchen and not in the gym. It's all about the choices that you make around food. And particularly when it comes to inflammation and reducing inflammation, food tends to be the key driver for inflammation for most folks. So what I would suggest doing before getting an, a food um, log or, or a, a food tracker or anything like that, what I did that was super helpful for, for me <laughs> was to take a picture of everything that I ate or drank. And I just did that for weeks at a time. And at the end of the day, before going to bed or when I was lying in bed, I'd look at my phone and I would just scroll through and look at what I had eaten <laughs> that day. And it was pretty easy. It's kind of like, you know, when you're when you're cleaning out your closet, it's kind of you can say, do I really want this? Do I really need this? Do I is this really doing anything for me? You kind of do a little Marie Kondo of your um, of your daily diet. And you realize all the ways in which, you know, because we eat for a number of different reasons, but hunger is really like very down on the on the the list of priorities for the reasons we eat. Most of we eat for we eat out of habit. We eat um, because of social social cues. We eat because we're um, uh, we eat because we have anxiety. There's all sorts of emotional reasons why we eat. Um, but if you can start to like identify that and then see 
what are the things that you've eaten? Um, you might be surprised at how much <laughs> unnecessary mindless eating we, we're, we're doing. And the other thing that's really helpful is if you don't feel great at the end of the day, you can look back at what you've eaten and make a note of it. And over time, you might start to see patterns and realize, oh, wait a second, I don't do well with a lot of nightshades. It gives, I don't feel great. Um, and so then that can start to be a cue to help you start to, to adjust your diet. I love that. I mean, talk about a simple hack. Just take a photo of everything you put in your mouth and then just use that and go back to it yeah. at night, look through it. What did I eat today and how did it make me feel? Because I've been using a lot of food trackers throughout the years and it gets a little tricky, especially <laughs> when you're, you know, you're out at a restaurant and this meal comes in and it's not an easy category yeah. to like, how do I divvy it all up and say, how much was it? Just take a photo of it. I absolutely yeah. love Love, love, love that one. All right, cool. One more question here because we want to make sure we keep this micro. Your favorite keto recipe? Favorite keto recipe? Um, gosh, let's see. Well, I love doing uh, bacon avocado omelet with fresh herbs and, uh, and goat cheese. Super easy, simple. Um, keeps your macros exactly where you want them to be for keto and uh, doesn't affect your blood sugar at all and tastes great. That is amazing. Well, this was fantastic, Seamus. Thank you so yeah. much for taking the time. I mean, I loved My hearing pleasure. from you. And, you know, the whole the whole idea behind us doing these is to hear from interesting people. You certainly have shared amazing stuff with us. And I thought your hack is amazing. Take a photo of your food. Simple, but incredibly powerful. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks. Thank you no, for being a I part of the Amorpho family. We loved That's having you me. on. And, uh, and helping us kick this off. So uh, with that, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone who's been watching and we'll be back soon again. Thank you. Be well. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.